Welcome back, finally after a very long time, to a new video here at Architects3DP. As you can see, I have a brand new setup because I've moved to a new house in a new city. And that's partially why I haven't posted any video in this very, very long time, guys. But here I am today to bring you a new 3D printer review. In this case, I'm gonna review the Gitek A20. And of course, if after watching the review you're interested in buying this 3D printer, you will find the discount code down in the description of the video, as well as the link to buy it from Amazon. And now yes, let's jump into the unboxing! This time we received the printer in this very big and heavy box. And now we're gonna have a look of what's inside. Having a look at the top, we first can see what looks like a mouse pad. Okay. Next we'll find instructions for the power supply settings. Next, some papers explaining the leveling process. And finally, the instructions of the printer that we're going to use to build it. And wait, because there is one more thing in this top layer of the box, that is the power cable. If we remove this top foam cover, we're gonna see what's below. We'll find a plastic bag full of tools. I can see a power cable, a spatula, etc. Next, we'll have some screws and the micro SD card, also what looks like the filament spool holder. And these look like the Z and the X axis of the printer. Now I'm gonna take it out and leave it here to see what else is in the box. If we come back to the box and remove the second layer of foam, the first that we can see is the print surface, but I'm gonna put here on the side for now. Next, we have the base of the printer, that I'm going to try to take out by myself. Okay guys, so here I am with all the components we just unboxed, and now we're going to continue with the build of the 3D printer using the provided instructions. Okay guys, so according to the instructions, for the first step we'll need these parts. For the second step, we'll need the base and these four screws. For the third step, we're going to install the filament holder. The third chapter of these instructions will be the cable connections, as you can see here. And finally get the printer ready for the first print. Alright, so here we have all the necessary parts according to the instructions. Here we have the base of the printer, the top part, the four bolts and the four washers. For that we're gonna first install the washers on the bolts. The next step will be to turn around the 3D printer and insert the four balls from the holes in the bottom as you can see here. That way they will come out from the other side. We'll replace the top frame of the 3D printer with the X and Z axis and we'll screw it in place using the provided Allen key as you can see on screen. Once finished, we'll have this stable and sturdy 3D printer that trust me is quite heavy as well. The next step will be, as you can see, to install the filament holder using these two screws and V-slot nuts. And once we have the screws loose just like this, since the extruder is here in the left hand side, I'm gonna place the filament holder right here. Here we have the printer with the filament holder in place, now we're gonna continue with the build. A very important step at this moment will be to place the voltage for your accordion region. The next step will be to connect the bolden tube, right here. You have to put a little pressure, that way it won't come out. Next step, we'll move the extruder right here in the center. We need to connect the cables for the extruder. That must be this one, I think. It is a bit hard to fit, but here we go. We have to hear the click. There it is. Next step. Connect the motor wires for the extruder that are right here. The extruder server will be this one, so we'll plug it right here. Here we go. Next we'll find the cable for the X motor and sensor and we'll connect them in place. So here we have the motor connected and the sensor. 
that is right here. These connections are complete. Now the next step will be to take a couple of zip ties that are included in the box and we're gonna insert them right here because we're gonna use this place to hook the cable coming out of the extruder, just like so. So once in place, we'll pull from the zip tie end, just like this, until it's fixed in place. And now we can use a pair of pliers to cut the rest of the cable. For the install, I gave the cable a bit of tolerance, as you can see here, because the extruder has to move from one end to the other. The next step will be to connect the cables for the Y-axis motor, as well as the sensor. In our case, the cables were already connected. Finally, we'll connect the Z-axis motor that I have right here, and the Z-axis sensor. You will find the sensor for the Z-axis here in the front of the printer. According to the instructions, the print has been complete, but I already have some pieces that I haven't connected yet, so I'm gonna connect them back. This looks like the filament sensor, and seems that the correct place to place it is right here, or maybe right here. For that, we'll find in the box these two little screws that we're going to use to connect it. That will be the last one, and here we go. By the way, we have a lot of tools that Gitek included in the box. Once we have finished the installation of the filament sensor, we'll have to plug the cable in as well, as we did with the other cables. This time we'll do it from the bottom, and here we go. The cable is now fixed in place. All right, so it seems the build is complete. Despite we have no more parts to install, we can notice that there is place to install a cable right here, as well as something here that may be a proximity sensor. By the way, the proximity sensor does not come with the box and is available to buy as an option. Once we have the printer complete, I'm gonna clean the desk and get ready for the first print. As you can see right here I have the printer complete and now I'm gonna pick up all the necessary components to start printing. The battery power cable that was included by the way, as well as this 4 GB micro SD card and how not some filament that Gitek included in the box. They didn't include a complete spool but at least the filament is properly sealed and it will hopefully be perfect for the first print. So I'm gonna open it up cut the little zip ties and put it in place. Now that I'm looking at the printer, I see something strange here, and it's that I almost forgot to install the print bed. I thought it was magnetic, but no. We'll have to stick it in place with the 3M included adhesive. I'm gonna remove the protector as well from the bin plate. Get ready for this satisfying noise. <laughs> It's quite hard, by the way. And once we remove it, we'll be ready to glue in place this nice print surface. Here we go. As you can see, the print surface is installed and ready for the first print. What I'm gonna do now is to connect the power cable of the printer. But as you can see, it's quite short. Now I'm gonna peel off the screen protector I'm gonna insert the micro SD card that I think goes here. It is quite strange that it has a micro SD card slot here, as well as a full SD card slot right here. Now I'm finally going to proceed and press the power button, and as you can see, the screen shows that the printer is ready. Now, according to the instructions, we'll home the printer, we'll turn off the motors and we'll make the manual bed leveling using a sheet of paper. So here I'm gonna press the knob, go to prepare, and press auto home. The printer will start moving very fast, as you can see. And we're gonna proceed with the bed leveling using these four knobs on each of the corners. So instead of turning off the motors, I'm gonna turn off the printer that is much easier. 
Now we're going to use this instructions paper to level the bed. To do that, you'll have to place the paper in between the build plate and the extruder and adjust it until you see some friction, but you can move the paper. Once it's leveled, we're going to load the filament. So we'll go to prepare. We're going to preheat PLA. Now I'm going to prepare and change filament. The printer will make an auto home and it will go up. Now I'm going to take one of the ends of the provided filament and I'm going to insert it through the filament sensor just like this and through this powder tube. You can press this clamp until you see the filament goes through. And so, you can see that the filament moves the gear. So we'll go to the front of the printer and we'll press the button. It will start heating up. And once it reaches 190 degrees, I think it will start extruding material. As you can see, it is extruding material. Here you can see that it is getting to the extruder and once it enters in the hot end it will start coming out of the nozzle just like so. Now that the printer is ready I'm gonna press print from SD A20 EST. Now it needs to heat up the extruder on the bed. Once it reaches the temperature, it will start printing. As you can see here, it started printing and the leveling looks quite good, to be honest. We need to make the last adjustments, but it is not bad at all. As you can see, the print is going on very smoothly and very fast, by the way. I'm gonna let it print for a while and I will show you the result once it finishes. Hello guys, so I just arrived home and this is what I found. Gitek included a file preloaded in the SD card as well as the portion of filament that I showed you before. But it resulted that there is not enough filament to print the preloaded file in the SD card. Something strange, isn't it? Apart from that, the printer features a filament sensor that is right here and we installed before. Well, so the filament ran out and the printer didn't stop. Here's what I found, and if we have a look at the screen, it says 3D printer ready, but we have lost our print, and this is the full amount of filament Gitek included with the printer. The quality, as you can see, is quite good, but the problem here is the included filament. What I'm gonna do now is to load a full spool of filament that Filamentive provided a while ago, and I'm gonna restart the print. Hello guys, so here I am one day later, and as you can see, the print has come out pretty good. Now, despite the issue with the filament and the filament sensor, the print has come out pretty good and the quality is excellent. Now I'm gonna remove the print from the bed, that is pretty hard by the way. I'm gonna use a spatula to remove it. Okay, and here we have it. As you can see, the calibration we did with the bed leveling is just perfect and it stuck so much to the bed that it was so hard to remove. Alright guys, so this review is getting to the end. For final details of the printer, I must say that the print volume is 255 by 255 by 255 that is kind of the normal print volume that we find in most of the printers we analyzed. Now I'm gonna let you with a couple cool shots of the printer, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button, and see you in the next video!